Welcome back, friends. My name is Eric. This is Mellow7 Gaming, and we are playing Football Manager 2019. I have played a couple of seasons since we last left off, and I don't actually have anything edited yet, so I did a pretty bad job. But we're going to record another episode here anyway, um, and we're going to continue on. So I actually... Let's take a look here. If we look at um, competitions, then we go to here, and then we go to think here and we can go back here we go this is the first season we played without you um and i have a little bit of a oh is this the first one we played no we're back we're back is this one there we go there we go we were up we were down we're back um i have a little bit of a a, a confession to make here i actually um i was watching a video by uh boot fm uh, and he was talking about a tactic called the volcano, which somebody had suggested to him on Twitter and he went looking and found it somewhere. And that person had said they got it from somewhere who'd got it from somewhere. Who'd... It, it's one of those things. Nobody's quite sure where it started, but a lot of people tried it. And he said it wasn't a it wasn't a tactic that was going to take a crappy team and you're going to win the league with it. But it was a tactic that was going to work for just about anybody and make you a couple steps better than you would have been regardless. And so what I decided I want to do was I was going to test that theory. I was going to put it in place, vacation for a series and see where I finished, go back, put in the tactic I was planning on running, vacation for a season and see how it finished and have a comparison between the two. And then I go back and play the season like I normally would. Um, I just really wanted to see if the volcano was all that in a bag of chips. Um, was it what he promised? Was it two or three steps better? Was it was it relegated versus being saved from relegation based on this volcano? And uh, let's go to tactics. I'll show you the I'll show you the tactic that we're talking about here. Um, load tactic. Did it not load? Here we go. Oops. Oh, is it not going to because we're on the wrong computer? Let's go here, create new tactic. We'll just do this for now. Choose, sure. Now, let's see if we can do it this way. The volcano. Is it not going to let me? And of course, I have it saved on, we're, we're playing on my shadow computer right now, not on my desktop. So, um, okay, so let me show you what the, let me show you what the volcano is. The volcano looks something like this. No, no, right in the middle there. Don't be swapping with people. Nope. Uh, I don't remember if it's deep, I don't remember if it's defender support, but we'll put on defend for now. And then three strikers across the top. This is essentially the volcano at its most basic. Uh, and you can see right here, this is, these are the tactics, shorter passing, pass into space, play out defense, float crosses, work ball into box, be more expressive, overlap left, over right, right, higher tempo, wide, um, throw it long, distribute to fullbacks, distribute quickly and counter, and then out of possession, you defend narrower, higher defensive line, higher line of engagement, more urgent to use offside trap. So this is it. It's essentially a 4-3-3, but with three defensive mids instead of three mids. This is it. It is basics. I, I don't remember what the exact roles were up here, um, but this is essentially what we were talking about. Uh, and we ran it. And our results were, we're going we're gonna to kill it this now. Um, I don't need that floating around. Um, and our results were, uh, were this. We finished 14th place. Uh, escaped relegation. We, we were, I think, picked to be here. Can we, can we look? Let's go overview season. Can we look at past season previews? No, no. Okay. Anyway, I think we were, we were picked to be 15th. Uh, and we got 14th, so it got us a spot. So I went back and I put in place 
the tactic I was planning on running. And I did the same thing. I vacationed for a season and I came back at lunch one day to take a look and see how it finished. And um, I'd been fired <laughs> in January. Uh, team ended up getting relegated. Uh, we were fired in January. Unfortunately, I had it on five rolling saves, one per month. And by the time June 30th rolled around, we didn't have a save where there's a team left. And I forgot to rename it. With the volcano, I'd made a save called the volcano and run it through. So I had the volcano save and it's in uh, at least five, but I had a fresh volcano save. And then this other one, we were fired and I didn't, I couldn't go back to the beginning of the season because I'd screwed up and forgot to make another save for that other test. So what I did was I just ran with it. Um, in this case, the volcano was clearly better, at least from um, an AI management, assistant manager managing the team than he was managing the formation I was going to use. Um, and I don't even... It was some variation of the diamond that we were going to run. I don't remember if it was just a 442 diamond narrow. I don't remember. Something along those lines. Um, and again, I'm not on the computer with the save. So, uh, But regardless, so what we did was we just took this and ran with it. That's that's essentially what happened. We just said, you know what? This is the only save we have left where the game exists. We finished about where we were supposed to finish. Um, and we moved on with our life. We didn't really, I didn't change the team at all. I didn't sign players for that, for that formation. I just stuck the best I could in there and went with it. Um, so that's what we did. And if we take a look at, I think our schedule, and then we can go back to here. So this should have been that season. Um, yeah, this looks right. Um, and so you can see here, here was our German Cup, by the way, following a fam some familiar theme. We got Permisens first, which we won for nothing. And then we got Bayern. <laughs> um, or, yeah, Bayer Leverkusen, excuse me, not Bayern. Not Bayern Munich, Bay Bayer or Bayer, Bayer Aspirin in the U.S. Um, uh, Leverkusen. Uh, and they crushed. Well, they beat us 2-1. Um, but we did okay. I mean, we 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 survived relegation. You can see here uh, we had a great match against uh, Frankfurt, who's a local local rival, local derby. So you're going to see um, uh, Mainz is again another local one. Uh, although it doesn't really get the were we away on that one? We're away on that one. Um, where were we home for Mainz? Forty three South. Yeah, you, you'll see we we close to sell out for for Mainz and Frankfurt. Generally speaking. Um, but we played, you know, we got some wins. Uh, we beat Braunschweig, which is something I never seem to manage to do, but uh, they did it without me. Um, 51,000 people showed up. Did we beat Frankfurt both times? Eintracht Frankfurt win 2-1. Eintracht Frankfurt win 1-0. We beat them both times. We crushed, uh, we crushed Hertha there. Uh, we beat Augsburg. And we beat Köln, actually. That's probably the toughest one. So let's just pick one of these and let's take a look at the highlights for it. Because to be honest, I never really watched it. Um, I don't know how the formation looks. I know how um, Boond FM said it worked. Um, but I just kind of plugged it in and went to work for the day. And that was essentially how it happened. There was no real planning. Um, we crushed Hertha. But let's look at this one. Let's look at this um, Eintracht Frankfurt one and see if we can actually watch this match. Um, it looks like we can. Field, key highlights. There we go. Loading. Whoa, that's loud. Sorry about that. Let me turn it down a bit. There we go. Little throw in here from Wooters. Wooters up to Hummels. I didn't talk about transfers yet, but we can do that too. Adley, Zimmer, across to the middle, Hummels is there, Agton's there, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six people in the box right now, despite the fact we're not playing, we're playing three center mids, which are probably these three here, is that a straight, no, that, Wooters is on the left, Zimmer should be 
Hmm, I don't remember what positions we played everybody in. Uh, they do manage to clear it, though. Uh, this is going to be a goal for them, I think. So they feed it in there. Quick stop. We've got one striker up front. That's Coley. Hummels is there. Agton. Tribal. And Riffs. So these are our three... These are our three center mids. Or defensive mids. As they can, we're about to hear some barking as somebody gets home. And slowly working it in. Nice, nice patience by them. They're offsides at the moment. Still offsides. Still offsides. Gets onsides there. Got to be scoring here quick soon. And then here comes the dog noise. Austrack finds Ion. Ion feeds it all the way across to Ojo. There you go. We lost our man. I um, mean, see, it's a pretty even match, all told, except we had three clear-cut chances and they had two half chances. So three and one, zero and two. So we didn't make the best of our chances, um, but we did we did create more chances. And if we would have had better players, you know, maybe we would have done better with it. Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, like I said, I didn't I didn't see any of this season. This is actually more of it than I've already watched. <laughs> Coley breaks through, feeds it far right, puts it away. And this is essentially what it's going to create. It's going to be able to absorb a lot of a lot of um, a lot of pressure. Hopefully, with all those guys back, and then with the two Wooters, just takes his guy down. And then hopefully, you get some counterattacks. You've got you've got the Segunde Volantes. You got your wingers. You got your striker up there. Kali beats his man, gets blocked, but he feeds it back to Peterson. Peterson gets it back out to Wooters. Wooters just feeds it off the side there. It goes up to Adley. Adley misses a free kick. We've got a lot. Let's just jump ahead here. How about we go to here? All right. Pusin. Boots it long. Just goes up over the top. They hit it down, but Cauley's going to be there. Bad, badly played by, by Alex there. Alex might have been playing defensive mid in this case because he actually is a pretty decent defensive mid, except for that was pretty horrible. He just dribbled all the way back and gave it to Pusin. He just panicked. Paredes, youngster for us this that season. Cauley, on the charge. We've got everybody coming forward. He finds it, Adley, and there we go. That's the goal. So that's how it worked. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the transfers for that season, and then we'll move on. Um, transfer history. And here we go. So... Um, we went ahead and sold Ramazan Oscool. We sold Marius Mueller. Uh, we loaned out a few players. And in January, while I was, you know, at work, um, my GM, assistant manager, whoever decided to sell Wooters. Um, I assume this is his, um, was his release clause, 2.5 million. So didn't really have a chance at it, but, but they sold him there. So this was the stuff I had set up. This is something they did while I was gone. Conversely, these are the players we brought in. The first one is uh, Rodrigo Paredes, um, youngster, very good. Look at those ten, look at those uh, physicals there. Um, and I'm, I'm, these are probably current ones rather than what he was at the time, because I think we brought him in at 18. So, but he's pretty good, and he stayed pretty good. So he paid 700 thousand. We brought him in from Libertad, um, which was Argentina, maybe. Possibly national. We're just going to pretend it's Argentina. I'm not actually sure. Um, but regardless, we brought him in. And then we brought in uh, Eli Yuan here. Uh, and he had great potential. And he was free. Um, and he was with A.G. Ajazio, which I played a lot of last, last, uh, last year. And uh, so we brought him in, just took a flyer on him, hoped he might turn into something. And uh, he really hasn't. It doesn't look bad, um, but there's nothing spectacular there. It's just kind of average. Excuse me. Um, but we took a flyer on him. He was free. He had a lot of upside, although he was, what is he, 26 now? He was 24 there. 
I didn't know that he'd develop anymore. He had like a, a current ability of like 104 and a potential of like 136 or 140 or something like that. And I didn't know if we were going to get anything out of him at that age already, but I thought it was worth a try. So we brought him in, nothing happened, but it is what it is. Uh, we got in a new goalkeeper. We brought in Sultan uh, Bai here. Um, pretty good. Still pretty good. Played well for us for a couple seasons. We brought in Lillian LeBlanc to put on the youth team. Uh, he's 20 years old now. Uh, we, we stashed him on the under, uh, under 19s at the time. Brought in Michael Vogel to play defensive, defensive mid, uh, with Bialik was the idea. And then used Rodrigo Paredes as our youngster, kind of our, uh, understudy, um, and our primary sub going forward. That was the, that was the plan. Uh, we brought in Yaya Hummels here, uh, attacking midfield center. We played him as a striker in this formation. Uh, really good. He, we brought him in on loan, um, He's actually considered, a, I think he was considered a wonder kid at the time. Uh, he looks pretty good. Um, anyway, we brought him in and he played He played striker for us that season. Uh, and then we brought in uh, Fabian Ambos, who was 15 at the time, 17 now. Paid 160000 for him. Again, just trying to get some young players that were decent. Uh, there's a good price on him for potential. Um, and he's, he's turning out to be okay. So uh, those were players in, players out, um, releases. Do we have a bunch of releases that year? Um, quite a few. This is this is mostly me just contracts in. Players were being cleared out at the end of the season um, that were never going to be anything. So this is kind of kind of that. All right. So then, uh, so that whole thing was based on on a Boot FM video. So then I was watching Work the Space and Benji. They're doing an online thing um, on the two thousand three two thousand four database, I think. Uh, and work the space is playing as the invincibles he's playing his arsenal and so he created a tactic in there he tried to create as best he could with the match engine the tactic that the invincibles played and that tactic happens to look a lot like um what we saw earlier uh this is work the spaces invincibles tactic so i decided that i was going to run that for this so it's all based on videos i'm watching and uh this is not even let's kind of Something like that. Um, so this is it. This is it's, it's a four-four-two with inverted wingers. So on defense, it's a four-four-two. On offense, it ends up more of a four-two-two-two. Something along those lines with these charging fullbacks that come in. And uh, you can see it's not actually all that different in uh, uh, shouts or whatever you want to call them from the previous, the volcano that we played. Uh, shorter passing, pass in space, play out defense. Float crosses, work the ball into the box, be more expressive, overlap left and right, higher tempo wide, throw it long, distribute to fullbacks, distribute quickly, counter, defend narrower, higher defensive line, higher line of engagement, more urgent offside trap. So pretty similar as far as all, oh, that is because it's that one. That's, that's, let's, let's go with the right one here. There we go. Um, yeah, not very different. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. Uh, almost identical, in fact. Uh, but so this is what we decided to go with. Um, and and let's go ahead and take a look. I'll show you the transfers that we had for that season. So this is now. So let's go transfer history. Uh, this is let's go back to all transfers and up a year. So that year, um, we let Pusingo, who was a goalkeeper the previous year, uh, we can take a look. I can show you how he did career stats with us. Um, we had him for essentially one and a half seasons, um, and he played pretty well, 695. Um, we paid 550 for him. Uh, SM Call came in with uh, 2.4 million and kind of unsettled him, and so we sold him. Uh, that's kind of the story. Uh, the story of this save lately has been goalkeepers um, that I think are starters for a while that get bought out from underneath us. Um, so anyway, Pusin played pretty well for us, but in the end, we lost him. Uh, Danny Menig was no longer really part of the team, um, so we managed to get a little bit of money for him. And you can take a look. He was with us for a long time, played with Kaiserslautern in one and two. Um, and he's done really... I take it back. He played all season for Duisburg. Um, 32 appearances, eight goals and assists, six, eight, five. So, you know, we got pretty good work out of him early 704 seven you know these these seasons right here he's all over seven uh, and this is between the two leagues 
Um, but then after that, once we kind of hit Bundesliga and our, even our drop back down to Bundesliga too, didn't do it, didn't do it. So, you know, we got 450,000 from him. We picked him up, I guess, originally from Sandhusen. It must have been on a free. Or maybe he was on Kaiserslautern, but he got loaned to Sandhusen. I'm not sure. Um, cause it doesn't say free or anything else there. So not, not hundred percent sure, but we made money off of him. He played well for us. We got our work out of him. Uh, Joseph Leopard's youngster, uh, Axel Fell's youngster just sent him out on loan. Players in, we brought in, uh, did we talk about my other, oh, you already saw Kali. You saw, you saw, you saw Kali and how good he was. So this is, um, Zoboth here is, um, meant to be in that 442 with Kali. That's the idea. So, um. We really got him on a free? That's not how I remembered it, but okay. Um, he's pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, <laughs> dribbling is 16. You know, everything's good. Everything's good. Um, value to 15 million now. Uh, anyway, we... Really? We got him as a free? I mean, it says free. I guess. I guess it was. You got loaned out a bunch, yeah. We there we go. They loaned him out for four years and then sold him to us or lost him to us. Um, I think he was into contract. Maybe that's what it was. Uh, we paid a lot of wages for him though, and we had a pretty good payout. I think um, for his bonus. I think that's what I'm remembering having to pay. Uh, and then we got Danny Hoffman. Uh, Danny Hoffman is also pretty good. We paid 4.7 million for Danny, a defender, wingback left. We're really having trouble filling that wingback left spot. Um, but you can see right there. Uh, you know, a year in the future, um, but he's still pretty darn good. Um, and he did, he did business for us back there. And then in the center, we brought in Elliot Matazzo to play center mid for us. So I can't find it. There we go. Great physicals, really good mentals. Technicals are maybe a touch slow, but, uh, but still 15 first touch, 15 passing, 15 technique. We'll take that all day long. So pretty happy with Elliot Matazzo there. Uh, and then we brought in a backup goalkeeper. Um, because we keep losing goalkeepers. We lost Poussin here. So we brought in uh, Marion Prince here to be the backup. Um, you can see we signed him the 23rd. We lost Poussin on the 10th. So, uh, And he's pretty good too. Uh, not quite as good as what we've had, but uh, definitely a solid, solid backup uh, goalkeeper for us. Good rushing out, great aerial reach, and uh, pretty happy with that. So that was that season. And then our actual... It ended, let's go to competitions, Bundesliga, uh, stages, forward one year. Things went okay for us. <laughs> Things went really well for us. Uh, we ended in fourth place, uh, qualified for uh, Europa, uh, European League football, continental football, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we went... 19-7 and 8. Uh, 68 goals scored, 47 goals against, 21 goal differential, which is pretty good. There's only a couple teams better than that. Um, and in fact, let's see, 68 goals scored. Um, I'm only seeing one team that scored more than that. Uh, and that appears to be um, Bayer Leverkusen. So we did okay. We scored a lot of goals. We we gave up a few goals. Um uh 47 against yeah there's not a lot of teams that gave up more goals than us at least none that finished in the top half right um 47 there's a 47 and a 55 and that's about it so let's show you how it went so schedule wise uh that is this season yeah and we went on a couple nice little runs we did this one here uh, six runs in a row, and then this one right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, win nine matches unbeaten, and then one loss and another couple, another win and a draw at the end to kind of um, to finish on good form, so to speak. Now, we did, uh, of course, um, we had a little bit of a tough draw. Um, in hindsight, we probably should have beat Borussia Mönchengladbach. Um, that's probably the weakest draw we've had in a while it is still a bundesliga team um, but it's one that 
didn't do as well as us, I don't believe. Um, in fact, let's... Where did they finish? No, they finished down here. We should have beat them here. Uh, but they put their eggs in one basket. They played hard. Uh, and you can see we had a draw against them here on the road. And... Beat them at home here 4-1. So to revenge the 1-4, the but I would much rather have flipped those two, those two results around. I would make a little bit of money for it, um, but it is what it is. So let's go ahead... Uh, let's take a look at, we'll see how this one, this, um, formation is played. Oh my God. Look at that. Eight, nothing in the friendly. I forgot about that. I didn't play the friendlies. Um, I let my assistant manager do the friendlies usually. Um, every once in a while I'll do one if I big formation change or if I'm just not sure, but this one, I just kind of let him roll through. Um, here, how about, how about Byron? <laughs> This one actually is probably not a good one. Um, as I recall, we got three goals, but we had like a 30% possession. Uh, we just did well with the chances we were given. So let's go ahead and look at something. Let's look at a different win. How about um, how about home to Colne here? Whoops, that's not what I want. I'll see a little good, a little bad. Um, I don't remember the specifics of this one. Uh, you can see right here, this was our... Um, our setup here, we're running by in this case as our, as our, as our goalkeeper because we lost Poussin. Um, Becker, he was a youngster. Uh, you guys probably remember because you've seen more of this recently. Um, we're starting him on the right. Uh, Bialik and Vogel in its center. Um, Hoffman on the left. Um, Bop, who was a loanee. Do we talk about Bop? Do we look at... We haven't looked at transfers yet, have we? We went there and then left. <laughs> Regardless, Bop was a loney. We brought him in to play mid-right. Uh, Dessinger and Matazo um, in the center. Adley uh, mid-left for us on the wing there. And uh, we're going to run, because these are um, inverted, right? He's right-footed, but we'll run him on the left and vice versa for Bop. Uh, and then Coley and, and uh, Zoboth there for our strikers. Um, Gans, Peretti, Ritz, Skinderi, who's another youngster of ours. Matinian, who's another youngster of ours. Isaac, who's no longer a youngster, but is just a solid, solid um, backup player. He's not spectacular, but you can put him in, know he'll do a job, and he, good defense, still good defensively. And Agton, who, was, who we hoped to be a spectacular superstar, but he's turned into kind of the mid-center version of Isaac there, or Isaac, or however we want to pronounce it. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the match. And we'll do key highlights again. We might skip a couple of them, depending on how much it drags, but... All right, little kickoff highlight, not doing anything. Dessinger feeds it in, gets headed back out. Uh, I guess this is going to be one of our goals. Bop on the outside, gets it into Hoffman, Hoffman into Adley. Adley tries to feed it through, it gets deflected out, but Dessinger pounce, feeds it through the crowd, gets his goal. Celebrates for a while. So a lot of key highlights in this one. We might skip some of these. Dessinger again, runs through, takes a shot. Your wingers in this are really powerful because, um, you know, you end up with these, these inverted wingers and they, they really crash the box. And Dessinger, we mostly play as mid-center. Um, but because he's got really good speed, he tends to get in there as well. Um, he's, he's more of a winger that we're playing in the middle. Although, I don't remember we looked at it right there, which where we were playing. It was inside or at center or wing. Let's stop here. If he's out here, he's playing on the wing. No, that's Bop. Yeah, that's right. He'll be on the other side. So we must be playing him in the center because we kept seeing him in here. Musanda charges in. Selton by. Grabs that one. Feeds it out. We're going to... Was our possession possession was 50 percent on this one they did have the better chances um somebody closed my door so of course the cat one's in um hi how are you jello so we kind of hung on in this one too um and that was kind of it for the season to be honest we we played above ourselves we made the most of our chances uh it was a nice tackle and clearance out to zobath um 
But we easily could have gone the other way, is what I'm trying to say. Um, we didn't dominate games wins. You know, we scored three goals here. We did it off of one half chance. Luckily, we only gave up two goals on the three clear cut chances we had. Shots on target and possession stuff, pretty equal. Fouls, corners, all that sort of stuff. But they created better chances. We just finished the chances we had, even when they weren't good enough to be a chance. So, you know, that kind of how the season went. Um, and we do have good finishing up front as far as our two strikers go. Um, so I would say that as much of this has to do with the tactic as anything else, um, you know, 50% tactic, 50% putting the players in the right spot, um, which just happened to get lucky that worked for what we had. Um, oh, Selton by makes another spectacular save. And Selton played really well for us too. So that doesn't hurt. So let's go ahead back out of this one. Um, let's see, we get back to wherever we had our transfers. There we go. Transfers. So we brought Zobath in, we brought Danny Hoffman in, we brought Matazo in, and there's Patrick Bopp. He was the loanee. Um, we did look at these really quick. I remember, I don't remember Bopp though. I remember talking about him, but he, he was good. Um, Marion Prince, he actually did really well for us that season. Uh, in fact, if we take a look at his history... Um, Kaiser Slaughter right here, 33 appearances, 8 goals, 10 assists, 4 players of the match, played a 7-2-3. He earned his paycheck that season. He did really well for us. So no problems at all with him. And then that brings us up to now. <laughs> so uh, we're predicted to be kind of a mid-table team. These are our transfers. Uh, we lost Danny Hoffman to Schalke. Um, we're going to get paid for it. Not particularly happy about it, but... Um, but yeah, um, I've loaned out Ellie Yon. He's, like I say, he's never really mounted to anything. Um, so we're just going to let him play with Red Star for a season. Uh, I actually fought this one for a little while. Um, I didn't want to send him to a competitor. Um, and like I said, I've been having trouble finding defensive uh, left, you know, left fullbacks. Um, Stefan Peterson, a youngster who's never going to do anything. He's kind of as good as he's going to get. We sold him out. We made, you know, maybe almost a mil out of it. Not too bad. Um, Stefan Jacob, a youngster who, again, who's never going to really do much. We sold him down to Nuremberg. Um, and this was another one I fought. Um, another goalkeeper that we lost. A number of teams came in, in including uh, Bayern Munich, came in trying to get him. And just over and over and like two to three offers every day. Um, he had a release clause of 4.4 million, which um, he's not worth. Um, and I just got sick of the drama. And uh, we went looking and we just upgraded. That's it. And let him go. Um, so I went to Ren. So players in. Uh, we brought in George Depew. Um, and here he is. Midfield center primarily, um, although he also can play either wing. Um, so we'll see where he gets played. I think I'm mostly going to play him... Um, I don't remember what footed he is. I think I'm mostly planning on playing him on the wing. Um, I just don't remember. I think he's left footed and we're going to play him on the right. Am I remembering that right? Well, he's left and right footed. I think he's going to play both places. Um, we'll fill him in as we need to. Uh, Marco Dalke here. We got him from Mainz. We paid 2.6 million. Uh, pretty good. Defender right. Uh, primarily meant to be a back up on the right side. Um, and I think he can play both sides as well. Yeah, he plays both sides. So he's a good backup because we can do either place with him. Um, left foot weak, right foot strong, but he's he's comfortable on either side. So we can do that. Uh, then we brought Sergio in. Sergio's a goalkeeper, youngster. Um, he's, a, he's a future pick, so to speak. Uh, but he looks pretty good right now. Um, Five-star potential. What do they show? Four and one possible. Take my word that possible is a real one. Uh, he's going to be pretty good at one point. Um, then we've got a couple players in on loan. Uh, Joss Rembetsky. Um, I think I actually, we got a bit from uh, Leverkusen. I think I brought him in to play striker. Um, but so far in the preseason, he's mostly played on either mid or right wing um, as a, as a mid, mid right or mid left. Um, but he also plays striker, and we will see him at striker on a fair amount. Uh, he's, you know, dribbling, finishing, first touch are all pretty good. Um, he's aggressive. Uh, he's not the super strongest or a huge jumping reach, but he'll he'll do a job there as striker. So pretty happy with that. Composure's not great. Um, 
but we'll see. He, he was meant to be a backup striker between Kali and Zoboth, um, but he'll also fill in, like I say, in the wings. So, uh, And then Ricardo Chara was brought to play mid-center for us. Uh, we got him from uh, PSG, and you can see he's pretty spectacular. So uh, physicals are just freaking amazing. Mentals are pretty good. Technicals, 18 dribbling, um, 17 technique. Like I said, he, he's pretty spectacular. Um, I might give him a specific com comment, uh, command to dribble more. I don't know that I've ever done that. Um, uh, and then we brought Coney to winter in. He is going to play defensive left. We need somebody to make up for Hoffman. Um, and his physicals are very, very good. Mentals are okay, kind of nines to 11s. Um, technicals are, are decent. Um, not a bad player, but mostly I just signed him so I could say De Winter is coming. I mean, that that's really ultimately made the decision of which left defender I was going to get. Uh, Tobias Jung. Uh, these are all youngsters. Um, these are all young players I brought in. Uh, we had some money left over. Um, and we had nobody, even, let's see, one, two, three, four. Five, this is six under 19 players. Remember that. Um, that gives you an idea, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I had 10 players. I did not even have a full side left on my under-19s. So we needed to bring some players in. There wasn't a lot of potential there to begin with, and you can still see we've still got some players here who are just here because I can't get rid of anybody um, and still feel the team. Um, and the under uh, the Kaiser Slaughter 2 team is not much better um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So we can just get a team out. And actually, I'd stolen a couple of those players to play with the uh, senior squad throughout the friendly. So I'd have enough to do full rotations every game. Um, so, like I said, we needed to bring some young players in. There's there's really no potential here. Uh, Gan's not terrible. Um, that's kind of it. Um, Ellie's got potential, not according to my scouts, but he's never going to reach it. Um, and that's kind of it. So we needed youngsters. So that's what that was. That was um, that was all of these signs here. So we'll go look at them real quick. Tobias Jung, mid-center, pretty decent. We'll see how it turns out, 15 years old. Jackson Matondo, midfield right, great acceleration. Um, pretty decent, decent, decent player, I think, at, at this age. Uh, Bulan Yildrim. Yildirim, maybe? Bulent. Um, good mentals. Strong. Defensive center. That's what we want. Uh, so we'll see how that turns out. He's already pretty good at marking. Um, Dominic uh, Bergkamper here. Really good physicals for us. He's only 15 years old, remember. Uh, strength will come up. Uh, and with that, probably jumping reach. But for now, um, we'll do okay. And mentals are pretty decent for him as well to start with. Technicals are a bit eh, um, especially for defensive center. But he does have a 10 marking, so... Uh, Julian Gessler, um, 16 years old. Again, pretty good physicals. Mentals are pretty decent. Uh, 12 for marking. Again, defensive center. Uh, one of these actually I think is going to be more of a defensive right. Probably Dominic with the speed. I think this is who it was, but I don't remember now. It's only showing us his best position. Uh, and Dominic Raymond here, who we just got because we lost another goalkeeper. Um so you can see on the 22nd. So we lost him fairly late. Um, yeah. So we've got Dominic Raymond, and he's going to be our new starting goalkeeper. Uh, and he's pretty happy with him. Um, good composure, good teamwork, rushing out, throwing, all that sort of stuff. So pretty happy with him. Uh, 28 years old, Polish. We'll see how he does. He is our new um, starter. Um Sergio's going to, he went to, well, first I put him on the Kaiser Slaughter in twos, but then the other 19s goalkeeper got injured for a couple months, so I've dropped him down to their 19s for now. Um, so that is the team. So if we take a look at the squad as it stands, not a huge squad. Um, we don't have 8 billion players. Um, El Haj Kohli is injured at the moment, and he will be out for a while, two to three months with a recurring hip injury, I believe. Yep. Um, seeing a specialist, so we'll see how that goes. That means we are going to see other players up at striker. Now, luckily for us, um, we've got a lot of players that can play striker. So we've obviously got Zoboth, we've got Chara here, who can play mid, who's, 
I brought him to play mid center, but you can see he he makes a pretty good deep line playmaker as well with the really good physical mentals. The only negative is a 10 finishing for him. Um, but that 18 dribbling and 17 technique, those are going to get him places. And with a vision of 16, anticipation of 15, hopefully he's going to find people when he's up there. So he's going to make a very good deep line playmaker. He's just not going to be a finishing type of one. Um, and then at the moment, I've got um, Dennis Jastrzemski here um, playing mid left. Uh, and he'll do pretty well there. He's getting lots of speed. Jumping reach is really the only physical that's down. Um, so we'll see how he does there. Uh, and then we're going to run Julian Dessinger on the right because Adley is also injured right now. Um, he will be back shortly, a couple days. Um, we'll see if he's worth putting on the bench for, for tomorrow with the game. But he is going to be our standard uh, mid-left. Yeah, And then Dennis is probably most often going to play on the right. Dessinger can fill in either place or in the center. That's kind of my plan going forward. Uh, and then I've got Elliot, and uh, because Chara has to play here, we needed somebody to fill in in mid-center. And so we're going to bring up the youngster, 17-year-old Armand Fedahu, uh, and he can also play striker. Uh, very, very fast, 18 and 17 in there. Uh, and again, dribbling, finishing, first touch, all decent. Um, with good composure, too, so he can score goals as well. So, But we're going to play him for this first match at mid-center. And um, I'm going to try Paredes and Vogel as our starting um, defensive center pairing, uh, both 20 years old. I ran Bialik and Vogel last season. Um, Bialik finished the season essentially kind of a 6-7-ish. How did he do last season? 6-9-3. Um, better, better than I was remembering, to be honest. Um, but you can see he, he hasn't... He wasn't spectacular that season. One player of the match here, 6-9-3, that's actually pretty good. Um, but if you take a look at, I think Vogel did better than 7. Um, yeah, Vogel was a 7-0-3, so not a whole lot between them. Um, but an entire team essentially played 7 or greater, except for Bialik last season. So we're going to give the youngster the start most of the time. Um, and so that's kind of my defensive center pairing. Um, but... We'll swap Bialik in as injuries permit, and we'll get him in there because he's he's every bit as good as they are at the moment. Um, Becker and Winter on the wings. Goalkeepers Ryman. I think that's everything on the bench. I've still got Isaac, who, despite that two stars, if you take a look, heading, marking, tackling, decent jumping reach, good natural fitness, good positioning, good decisions, and excuse me, and he's determined. So uh, I just keep signing him. You know, um, they keep telling me he's not needed and I should dump him. And I, whenever there's an injury or you need an emergency, you can put him in and you don't have to worry defensively about him making mistakes. Um, then we've got Dalkey here. Like I said, he can play right or left. And uh, so good sub to have on the bench. Um, we've got Ture. He's only good on the left. Um, still with us for now, mostly because he's um, he's homegrown. Uh, Sven Agton can play a lot of different places. We could even put him at mid-center if we wanted to. The heading's not great. Um, but otherwise, he could do a job there if we really had to. He's strong and he has decent jumping reach. Um, and the mentals are spectacular for him. So, again, another good sub who can play a few places. He can also play left. He can play either wing. So he can play any of these four spots. He's left-footed, which means we would probably play him on the right side um, this season uh, as that inverted uh, mid-center or left-center, whatever we want. Mid-left. There we go. Uh, Fabian Ambos, we've got on the bench as well. Another youngster, 17 years old. Uh, again, really good physicals, except for the 10 strength. Uh, uh, 17 years old, though, that's going to come up. Uh, good mentals and great passing, 16. Um, his vision is good. Anticipation, not so much. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but again, on the bench, we can play him anywhere in the middle. Um, and George Depew, um, again, he was assigned primarily to play on the wing, but he plays mid-center as well. And uh, that 16 first touch and 16 vision, I really, really think are going to be useful. Um but at least for now, I've got him on the bench. We'll see how kind of things shuffle around. Um, uh, Adley's injured. Coley's injured. And then our backup goalkeeper is going to continue to be Marion Prince, who's been it's been pretty decent for us. Good aerial reach. Technicals are really good. He's just a little bit slow. Um, no flair. His off the ball is pretty horrible. But we're not passing to him very often, so... I think that'll be okay. So anyway, that's the team this season. That's how the last two seasons went. Uh, we're going to play through this one. We do have European football. Um, take a look at our competitions. 
um, form as usual. We drew last season's champion for the Pokal Cup. I don't have the name fixed on this computer, um, so it's just German Cup. But um, Hanover won everything, won the won the cup last season. So of course they're our second round draw. Just to continue that second round killer um, <laughs> draw, they're not supposed to be spectacular. Um, we are supposed to finish. Um, Mid table, and they're supposed to finish a little bit above us, I believe. Preseason preview. We're supposed to be 11th. They're supposed to be 8th. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, so it's a beatable game, but a tough game. That's essentially the way I'm going to look at it. Um, especially because it's it's on the... Uh, no, did we get home on that one? Um, nope, nope. We're away, of course. Um is what it is. We did win our first round uh, against LSK Hansa, 550000 um, in TV money. I think that's it. I think that's a good wrap so far for this, for the last two seasons and a preview for this one. So uh, come back. We'll play our first match. We'll see you next time. Cheers.